हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू योगिक एंड मॉडर्न साइंस फ्रेंड्स अगेन आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग टाइम आई हैव कम विद अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक एंड द टॉपिक इज बेस्ड अपॉन संगोष्ठी विच वॉज बींग हेल्ड अ फ्यू डेज बिफोर आई थिंक इन वृंदावन और इन सम अदर प्लेस आई थिंक इट इज वृंदावन एंड इन दैट संगोष्ठी there were some mahatmas or you can say saints they gathered together and they were speaking on the topic jeev jagat and maya and i watched some of their episodes actually it was a long series because in each episode one saint was speaking on this topic and really this topic is very very deep and complicated in the sense nobody seems to understand these topics because understanding does not come with words the understanding comes with experience in which there is no or very very less interference of the memory or sanskar that is the background of gaining some understanding understanding implies the insight not the experience the way we experience the world it is not that kind of experience so i would use the word insight rather than using experience this is one thing about this complicated topics so the saints were talking about what is jeev what is maya what is jagat although they were not talking about the parmatma or the the origin of everything because until we talk about the energy which is original or what we say in yogic science the undivided energy or non dual energy where there is no sense of dwait advait the energy of advait you can say so they don't start from there but uh, i would like to shed some light on these three topics very briefly very shortly from the yogic science point of view because in that sangoshti whatever they were talking i don't want to comment on those saints but one thing i would like to say that whatever they were saying they were saying from the shastras because shastra or any spiritual doctrine okay that is uh, their proof basically and from that you know shastras they propose something and they say that it it has been proved in in particular shastras right so that is why it is correct so their proposition is correct because it is mentioned in some shastra right so that is one thing i don't want to go into that because uh, for the in yogic science whatever we say we say it on the basis of our insight and insight is always real because it is devoid of any memory and experience it is real real in a sense it is not of time or a space it is something it arises from the innermost being which is which is timeless so let me start first by because the topic is jeev jagat maya but uh, from yogic science point of view i would like to start with the first principle of the yogic science in yogic science the first principle is the energy which is undivided which is un- non dual energy right that is the first principle and in that principle in that energy there is no jeev there is no jagat there is no maya there is no parmatma nothing it is called it may be called nothingness 
nothingness means it is devoid of all these things it is pure energy so being pure energy you cannot you i mean don't think that it is nothing okay it is pure energy that's all so this is the first principle now in the first principle there arises the two principles the energy of parmatma and energy of prakriti and the two principles have arisen due to the notion in the first principle that it has to be proved in some way or other it has to be concrete proved because in that energy in, in the first principle nothing is proved because there is nothing so how can it be proved or who will be proving it because there is no sense of i in that energy there is no sense of the otherness so i or otherness don't exist in the first principle but spontaneously there arises but spontaneity is there so spontaneously there arised these two principles okay one is called may be called parmatma of whatever word you can use i mean the pure consciousness and the other energy you can call the prakriti right energy which which can act upon the other energy so the energy which will act upon may be called parmatma and the energy which will be acted upon by somebody else something some other energy that is that may be called prakriti prakriti you can say the dependent energy right and parmatma you can say the independent energy right why i am uh, telling about all this i mean the the preliminary proposition because only then you can understand these three things jeev jagat and maya now with the arrival of these two principles in the first one the maya starts what is maya the energy of consciousness which is parmatma it is in action <coughs> because it has the memory of the first principle parmatma has the two systems has the memory of the first principle right now in order to get back to the first principle it is always in action so for the parmatma to always remain in action there are two reasons one is it has to prove that we exist the first principle exist right now the first principle is converted into two principles the energy of parmatma and the energy of prakriti and on this level it has been proved that there are two energy okay one energy acts upon the another energy so at this level there is some proof right now the energy wants to come back to its original nature now it is trying in every way right and that is why it is always in the movement it is trying to construct something to to create something so that it can be proved that the first principle has got some some you can say some structure some concreteness but this concreteness is never proved it does not appear right but uh, it is in the you know memory of these two principles that no we are doing something right if in the first go nothing has been proved nothing has been constructed now in the second go right it might be proved it might be constructed again so they are always in the constant movement due to this wrong notion that we can construct something right if nothing has been constructed then again they are in the movement so from these two regions they are always in the movement this energy of parmatma 
So this is Maya. Nothing has been constructed, but there is a notion in the system that something will be constructed. There will come a point, there will come a time when something will be constructed. This is Maya. Now, it is in the movement, constant movement, and due to being in the constant movement of Paramatma over the Prakriti, the new systems are being created inside the Paramatma, inside the Prakriti, not Paramatma, inside the Prakriti, right? Now, inside the Prakriti, there are so many systems are being created. So many, you know, spherical particles are being created, right? And all these particles which are being created okay, due to the movement of Paramatma around the Prakriti. Now, the energy of Paramatma is also being transferred due to this movement to all the particles which is being created within the Prakriti. Now, all the particles of the Prakriti is called Jeev, whether they are like us or they are like something else or they may not exist in the Jagat, right? But in the Prakriti, they exist. All the particles are there and all the particles of Prakriti are called Jeev. Not that only we are Jeevas or, you know, Jeev is in the animals, but not in plants, but not in rocks, but not in the material which we call non-living. It is not like that. In yogic science, nothing is non-living. Everything is living. Every particle is Jivatma. Right? So, this is Jivatma. Jivatma means the energy which is inside the Prakriti. That is Jivatma. Which is inside. And the energy which is outside the whole Prakriti, that is Paramatma. So, this is the difference between Paramatma and Prakriti and Jivatma. Right? For Paramatma, the whole, I mean, the whole Prakriti, okay, is the energy on which it acts. But for Jeev, there is a small particle, okay, within the Prakriti on which Jivatma acts, right? So you can say Jeev, Jeev is the miniature of the system of Prakriti and Paramatma. That is Jeev, right? But it is inside the Prakriti. So from the yogic science of or yogic science point of view, okay, this is the you can say the explanation of jiva. Now, Maya has been explained, jiva has been explained. Now, jiva does not know the operation of Paramatma because due to the operation of Paramatma, activity of Paramatma, jiva is getting all the energy, right? Jiva is unaware of this energy and due to this energy, Jiva is doing each and everything, right? And in the Prakriti, there is the system of Sakar and Nirakar. So for Jivatma, there is the whole system, the system of Nirakar, the system of Sakar, which is liquid, as we have already mentioned in the previous episodes. And in between there is Jivatma, right? So for Jivatma, for Jiva, there is a whole system. But for Paramatma, there is only one system, which is Prakriti. So these are the differences between Paramatma and Jivatma. Now, from the Jiv or Jivatma point of view, what is Jagat, right? Now, from the Paramatma point of view, the, there is no such thing as Jagat. Okay, because for Paramatma, there is only one energy, which is Prakriti. But this system is automatically transferred okay, of the Paramatma and Prakriti to the Jiva also. Jiva is also in the action, just as Paramatma is in action. But for Jiva, there is the whole system. Right? There is Sakar energy and Niragar energy. So, due to the influence of the, the you know, momentum of the Paramatma and Prakriti, Jeev starts 
not start g is also in the action but its action is different okay it is whatever it does it does in the sakar energy sakar or neerakar so the movement of jivatma is either in the sakar or in the neerakar right not around the whole uh, you know the whole prakriti okay because it is within the prakriti right so in the sakar whatever activity is being done by the jivatma the memory of all these activities is contained in the jivatma it is it remains with the jivatma but in the in the sakar energy jagat is before the jivatma or jeev because the jagat or you know whatever we see around okay or whatever exist around a jivatma is nothing but jagat right so jivatma proves the maya or the memory in the sakar in the form of jagat right so jagat is for all the jivatmas okay means whichever jivatma is in the sakar right the moment it gets out of the sakar right then there is no jagat okay for that type of jivatmas okay there is sanskara there is memory okay but for for that jivatma there is no jagat because now it is outside of the sakar energy but again there is a momentum or there is momentum in the form of uh, memory right which drags again the jivatma again into the sakar and again the whole uh, memory system okay it it starts manifesting itself okay and jagat is again proved so in the sakar with the help of jivatma the maya is being proved right it is being in a kind of uh, sort of you can say it is being constructed right so the construction of maya by the jivatma okay in the sakar is what is called jagat so from the yogi science point of view this is the explanation of jagat jeev and maya and these explanations are it is being explained on the basis of the insight right not from the uh, from some kind of doctrine okay or from some kind of hearsay right it is purely on the basis of insight okay so that's all okay from the yogi science point of view sarva ji aap yadi kuch kehna chahe nahi iske baare mein theek hai right so friends that's all about uh, jeev jagat and maya i hope uh, you will uh, you know and try to understand uh, whatever i explained about these three things and i hope you will come to realize the you know the veracity of whatever we are explaining in this channel because whatever we explain about any topic it is purely on the basis of our insight not from some kind of not it is not shastriya or bookish we are not bookish right even if something is written in the book okay if it is in line with our insight there is no issue there is no problem okay and most of the things in the shastras are correct the only thing is we don't have the clear eyes to understand those things so i am not denying the shastras okay shastras are proved but they are proved and it is in the shastra it is not proved for us it will be proved for us the moment we have the correct insight and insight comes when we look at things without the intervention of the memory or sanskaras that is very very important so i hope you enjoyed this episode thank you